Well, I think it's, it's not appropriate right now for him to be posing for the cover of a magazine. This is not a celebrity contest. The lives of a lot of people are at stake. Millions of jobs have been lost. Many families have been affected. We look up to the leaders and people in charge of our public health to really do whatever they can and make sure that we save lives. Joining me now is Dr. David Samadhi. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. And for those of you watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe to The Daily Caller. Uh, now, Dr. Samadhi, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on where we are right now when it comes to coronavirus. Explain where we were and then where we're going. I know that you've been following this from the very beginning, closely crunching numbers, uh, looking at what's going on in other countries, and you have a strong opinion uh, on some of the things that we should be doing. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I think this is a very important moment in our country. We started this journey of coronavirus pandemic about six months ago. A lot of articles, Stephanie, that's coming out right now indicates that this virus has been around since October or November of last year in China. We just heard from a Chinese scientist that indicates that the government of China knew about this virus, but they did not share any of their facts. We didn't get the right information about the human to human transmission. So we were completely blindsided by this. Now, one of the big things that happened, and the first rule of any infectious disease is isolation and containment. And God God bless our president. I have no idea how he got this right, but sometime in January, he decided to put a travel ban and, and stop people from coming from China to US. What that meant is, is that we were able to save millions of Americans from being contaminated by this contagious virus. Fast forward to February, when we started getting those models. Remember the models that was coming from Dr. Fauci and CDC? See, saying that we expect to see 2 million deaths as a result of this virus. And then come to March, it come to 1 million in, in, in April or May, became like 240,000. We are realizing that all those models were wrong. And we also realized that through the skills of this president, we were able to bring in the private sector and the public sector. This doesn't happen all the time where an executive person as a CEO of this country is able to bring in the public and private together to make a decision when it comes to medications, ventilators, PPEs, bringing the hospital administrations, bring the entire force and put a US, fast, a US task force in order to fight against this virus. That was a huge deal. And that today, six months after, we see even though we lost over 125, 130,000 people, we still are ahead of the game. We have much more control. We have a lot of medications. We're able to diagnose this disease much better and treat it much faster. And we know that the ground zero for this virus is in our nursing home. Did you know that 47% of death in all of our series comes from nursing home? And if we would have protected the elderly with a lot of medical issues, these numbers would have been very close or even less than the flu uh, influenza. So I think we are in a good position. I'm very optimistic that we're going to win the war against this virus. I know there is a lot of mainstream media that keep talking about the numbers on the rise, et cetera. I'm happy to discuss with you, but I think we've come a long way. I don't anticipate to see a second wave because we're much more equipped. Our hospitals are equipped and we have a lot of ammunition to fight this virus. Yeah, there is a big focus on the doom and gloom from the media. And, but you know, we don't want to ignore the fact that there, are, there is a surge in cases, if you will, and what, 3.5 million coronavirus cases in the U.S. Uh, we also are around close to 140,000 deaths. And so you know, we don't want to downplay what's going on, but we also should focus on the amount of people who uh, test positive, have no issues, uh, who, people who recover. This is a serious infection. There's no way that anybody can underestimate this virus. But hundreds of thousands of people die from cancer. Hundreds of thousands die from suicide, from depression, from car motor, motor, motor vehicle accidents. But the, the truth is that you know, every year we lose about like 70 to 80,000 from influenza. The one, loss of one life is too much. But, but the bottom line is that we are getting the control of this. When they talk about the fact that the hospitals are completely full and the ICUs are full and we're completely overburdened by this. Hospitals are meant to be full. If you have an empty hospital, we are in trouble because it's a business. So every hospital administrator wants their ICU 
ICU full, wants the hospital to have full. But the question is, what percent of those people in the ICU are COVID? And when you dig in, you realize that it's only about 20 to 25 percent. And there's a lot of non-COVID patients that are in the hospitals. So I agree with you that the mainstream media has been really taking this hysteria and panic and fear and has magnified it. And maybe that's part of the rating business. But as a physician and doctor, my job is to do the best I can to give the best uh, data and facts to the public and be very honest and truthful about this. And the mask debate rages on. And so there are a lot of people who hate wearing the mask. They wear them. There's businesses that are forcing you to wear masks. So we saw a Republican Georgia Governor Brian Kemp issue in an executive order Wednesday prohibiting local municipalities from establishing mask mandates. Do you think this was a good call from the governor? Should people have a choice to wear a mask? I think what we need to do is to look at uh, America as a very heterogeneous a group of states. For example, what works in, in Georgia may not work in New York. It may completely not work in Florida. We need to look at the data always. Whatever decision you're going to make in, in science, you look at the risk and benefit. If you're looking at the state where the numbers of positive COVID and the number of deaths are extremely low, mandating a mask for the entire state it's just, you know, basically flexing your muscles. It doesn't make much of a sense. Whereas places like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, where we were hit hard and a large number of these cases, we had to flatten the curve. We had, what did we have? We had social distancing, we had washing our hands, and we had wearing a mask. Those are the three things that we inherited from CDC and Dr. Fauci. And it's very difficult to debate for public not to wear a mask. Whether or not, and the science will speak about this. There are some research that talks about the fact that it can reduce about 30% of getting this contamination. But a lot of research behind these masks are not great science. For the time being, I think that if you're indoor, you're around people, it's best to wear the, the mask. If you're out there, there's not too many people around you, you have the wind blowing, the risk of like, passing this to other people is very low and uh, wearing a mask probably is not going to help you. Mind you, so many people are wearing their mask around their necks, around their chins. They take them off all the time. Um, so there's an art to this, and it's very difficult. I have to tell you to wear this for hours and hours and hours in an 80 degree, but we should try to do, be responsible and do the best we can. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of people who are working, at, you know, when you go to the grocery store or when you go to some of these businesses that are still operating, and I just couldn't imagine having to sit in a mask and work for an eight hour day. I mean, it's just tough to walk into a business, get what you need and leave with that mask on. I, it's absolutely correct. And I think it's, it's okay to take it off, wash your face, take a rebreather. These masks also get very dirty during the course of the day. People wear makeups, they cough in it, they sneeze in it. So I think like it's perfectly fine to change these uh, masks that are not very expensive uh, two or three times a day. And if you use one of these cloth masks, you make sure that you wash it every day and keep it very clean. You don't want to get more bacteria besides the virus in your system. So that's something that I would recommend absolutely. Right now, there's still a lot of discussion and question about what's going to happen when it comes to kids going back to school in August. Where do you stand on this? Let me make it very clear to you. The science has spoken. The data about children going back to school is very clear. We have data and science from over 20 European countries that indicates that when they open their schools, from Germany, from UK, from Switzerland, from many other places, that when they opened their schools, there was not a rise of, of these children and, and kids in school, K1 to K12, getting this virus. The risk of dying from this virus among those uh, children is extremely low. The chance of transmitting it to their adults is also very low. So the risks are low. And what's the benefit? The benefit is that the children need to be around each other. They need to socialize physically, mentally, culture-wise, psychologically. It's time to open up our schools. Distant learning is not working. Kids are not logging in. There's no math. There's no reading. Everybody is helping each other. This is not the way to go. A lot of the child abuse is being recognized in the school by other students, by the teacher, and they get their nutrition and on and on the benefits of this. At the same time, you know, when you have the kids at home, the parents are locked in. They can't go to work. Not everybody can afford to hire uh, nannies and other helps 
So this is a cycle of economy that we just need to get it started. And I absolutely feel safe to open the schools. Interestingly enough, the American Academy of Pediatrics also agrees with the fact that it's absolutely safe to open up our schools. And you also saw a series of pediatricians from MSNBC the other day that came and they asked them, and I don't know if they expected this kind of answer, are you going to send your kids, do you feel safe for kids to go to school? Unanimously, all those pediatricians, they said it's absolutely safe to do this. So I think that debate is, is pretty much done. Why Dr. Fauci is not coming out and publicly mention the data, the science, and facts to the public is beyond me. And that's some of the reasons why it's a little disappointing to see that. Speaking of Dr. Fauci, I, I saw on Twitter, you seem to take issue with the fact that he was on the cover of InStyle. What do you think about the optics of that? Well, I think it's, it's not appropriate right now for him to be posing for the cover of a magazine. This is not a celebrity contest. The lives of a lot of people are at stake. Millions of jobs have been lost. Many families have been affected. We look up to the leaders and people in charge of our public health to really do whatever they can and make sure that we save lives. That's what we are, as physicians, we're in the business of saving lives. Every life worth fighting for. Remember that. Every life worth fighting for. And as a surgeon who is an expert in prostate cancer, that's what I do every day. Having said that, there's always enough time later on for popularity contests. If he's coming in and saying like, you know, we expect a lot of bad things on our way. I see maybe a second wave coming in. It doesn't look so good and on and on. And it's always very pessimistic and it's always negative and all of these things that he tells us. I've never heard but like one good positive from him saying that we're winning and we're conquering, this virus is slowing down. So if you're having all this negative news, what are we doing interviewing with Julia Roberts or on the cover of these magazines? And it just doesn't make any sense. So um, as, a, as a person to person, as a doctor to doctor, I respect him. I think you know he's done a lot in the past many years. Uh, when Ebola was around, you know, we, 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 we did well. I still wanted the travel ban. I was one of the people out there in Fox News that was screaming about travel ban to protect these cases not to come to our country. But in this case, I think he's been playing both sides of the politics and people are a little upset. Wear a mask, not wear a mask. You get it from the surface, you don't get it from the surface. And all of this little wishy-washy stuff, people are starting to lose trust and that's not good for us. Well, Dr. Samadhi, we're gonna leave it here. Thank you so much for your insight and uh, hopefully we can have you on again sometime soon. Look forward to being with you. Thank you, Stephanie.